Larry Stroman's artwork is weird. I mean, right? Like, there can't be any denying that. I'm not saying bad. I'm just saying it's really weird. And that's probably why he has such a, a, a career and a good following. Is he just brought something to the table that was just unlike anybody else's stuff. It was just so strange. Um, Wildcats Annual, number one. James Robinson, uh, Larry Stroman on art. Uh, you know, this isn't an example of the best of Larry Stroman's artwork. I'm not sure what is, actually. When I think of the stuff of his that I like the most, um, kind of like Wills Portacio on X Factor, um, when Stroman was on X Factor. That's the stuff where I first ever saw him. And it was just so strange and weird. I liked it. But has he done anything else that I... There's nothing that I know of that kind of ever reached that peak. Uh, that peak... I don't know why. I feel like Larry Stroman still has like a the greatest work he's ever done in him. He's posting on, um, do I see him on Facebook or Instagram? I can't remember which one. But he's drawing all the time. I just don't know that he's drawing comics anymore. And I don't know if he needs to or if he wants to. I wish he would. I talk a lot often about artists that are out there that I'd like to see drawing a book, goddammit. But they just, they don't for whatever, various reasons. But um, I just kind of ran across this, and um, I was like, why not? Let's dig it out. I wonder how many people remember this. As is the case with Mr. Stroman, um, a lot of weird, interesting visual imagery in here. Some weird that I, I don't like. I respect it, but I may not like it. And there's some stuff that's legitimately interesting. Inks are by, it just says JD. That's just how the inker goes by his name. I feel like... His inking is a little bit too slick to complement Larry Stroman's artwork in the best possible way. I'm not sure who inked him on the X Factor run, and I feel like a, a rougher style might fit Larry Stroman's pencils better. I don't know why. I just remember looking at this, and it's big and dynamic, and it just it feels a little bit too slick and too clean. I don't know. I don't know what would be the best version of Larry Stroman's work, but it also could probably help, you know, it, it contributes to not being as excited by this book, is that I kind of liked the Wildcats at the time, but they're really just new characters, and they're all kind of carbon copies of something else, and they were really trying to do something else. They brought in James Robinson. They brought in Alan Moore and wrote some really interesting good stuff, but it's kind of a... kind of who cares... So when you don't care about the characters, you better have a really compelling story. I did read this once, and I kind of flipped through it, and I, I if I ever, I, I don't recall anything about this. So we're basically just here to look at the artwork. We got um, the uh, revised Stormwatch team that Warren Ellis was just kicking ass on, just making it go crazy awesome. But these are those characters. Dynamic, interesting, like, poses, anatomy, lighting, Weird but interesting faces. This is an interesting shot where you got the character like this back shot, like from behind her ear and then her side of her face. And then Jackson King, the weatherman here. And then this shot, because he uh, has got this gear on his face. It connects him to all kinds of technological information to keep him plugged into their this uh, space platform, this space station that they're on where he can observe the world. Uh, as Stormwatch. So that's why he's got all this gear. I think it looks awesome. It's kind of shaped a little off, like his head is a little bit too thick this way, but it looks good. I can't pass up pointing out this shot here, and you'll see a couple others in this book. Larry Stroman has this thing where on occasion he'll take male characters and he likes to draw their lips black and then leave some highlights where it looks like they're wearing lipstick, which is what he's got going on there. It's not there. But that mouth looks like that mouth. So, you know, it makes us all wonder what that mouth do. I don't know. But cut to, you got the Wildcats. And it's very a very designy, odd splash page to introduce the character. You got Jacob Marlowe sitting in his weird little chair with his little poof of cigar smoke coming up this way. And then it turns into a thicker, straight shape. You got Maul, you got Voodoo here, you got just the pointy claws of Warblade, Spartan, 
um, Zealot, Void, and um, Zealot's sister, and I can't remember her name off the top of my head, and it's just going to drive me nuts because I can't think of it. But what a weird but interesting composition. Like these two girls framed right here, back to back, just standing there, staring off into the distance. What is everyone else doing? I don't know. But just look at the weird, weird ass composition. Like here's Marlo's face and his, the way he does his hair, just zooming out of frame here. The smoke coming off his cigar rendered in this ridiculous, overly done thing. What is with this weird panel shape? It's interesting visually, but I don't know if it helps anything by like, you got this good shot of her, but it like cuts her arm. And so just have this little hand sticking out here. It's visually interesting, but it's it kind of, I think, interrupts the 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 flow of the reading experience just for the sake of weird. And I mean, I guess Larry Stroman is honestly one of those guys I'd put in that category that does weird and can do weird and go crazy, be weird. But some people pull it off a little better. Sam Keith is one of those guys that I'd kind of put out there like that. Strowman's in that world, but it's just, it's a little bit, I don't know, unnecessary. You got Grifter, not there yet, but um, kind of a weird drawing of him. I mean, this big frumpy tarp that he's wearing that's supposed to be his, his coat that he wears. Um, not the best drawing of the character in that design. This little pea shooter gun that he's got pointed at this giant lizard alien monster, like... It, I, I don't know. I don't feel like this little gun would hurt him or, or not. I don't know. Another weird artistic thing. Look at this voodoo here. Her proportions are a little strange. I feel like... I mean, I guess I'm thinking of like regular Wildstorm image comics type proportions. If you were to draw this girl and her head and her upper body, it all looks good and pretty proportionate. But I feel like her legs are kind of stumpy. Now are probably technically correct but I feel like he shortened them up to fit him into frame so he doesn't cut her off at her ankles off the page. I could be wrong this could be an entirely conscious decision but what a weird interesting design for her long black hair just to be this big black shape just poofing out and going off frame. Why is it doing that? That's 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 one way you can design, uh, describe Larry Stroman's artwork. Why did he do that? It makes no fucking sense why but he does, and it's part of his visual style, his flair that makes things interesting. I, I, My brain would never allow me to do that. I think it's awesome, and I wish I had that kind of wild abandon for caring about. This doesn't make sense, but it's visually interesting, so I'm just going to do it. And if you don't like it, you can go fuck yourself. That's what he's doing, I think. It's weird. I don't get it, but it's there it is. Um, again, I'm not particularly concerned about what the hell's going on with the story. The Wildcats, the Daemonites, the Mystery, Murder. It's written by James Robinson, and so I've never read anything of his that I disliked. Um, I haven't read a lot, but I've read some, and it was all good. Another crazy... This feels more like standard Larry Stroman stuff in, in a good way. This big, weird, weird-looking face. Weird designy elements in the background. Bright, flashing lights back here highlighting things in a weird way something strange but look at this weird little fucked up hand here so weird and again this is that Strowman, you know defined as why did he do that and it's fucking weird but that's him i don't know why he's got void here like just like pinching her nipples like She's like, this is hot. I got to touch myself. Like, I've been there. Been there, girl. Um, Grifter, it's a little bit better shot with his trench coat and everything. God, Marlo here looks like a like a little child doll. What a strange... Again, I know. It's Strowman. It's strange. It's just strange. Um, whatever. The team's going to go do something. Void's going to do her little magic teleportation thing. Weird shot of her arm coming towards you with her hand pointing out. Uh, you know, it's in perspective, forced perspective to have that hand coming out there. A little strange, a little weird. I know. 
Then I guess they teleport somewhere. They run into a bunch of monsters. Um, voodoo number four. I've actually got issue number one. Um, I'm going to look at here soon. Adam Hughes doing this cover at least. Man, that's a that's an interesting cover. I'm digging it. Whatever. Anyway, moving on. Savant, that's the name of uh, Zealot's sister character that's been here. But they show up on scene, a bunch of monsters just attack him. Okay, here's another bunch of Strowman weirdness. I mean, I guess Spartan is suddenly a transgender robot and he's wearing makeup. I mean, don't tell me he's not wearing lipstick right there. You can't tell me he's not. He even got a little sheen on it. So I guess before they went into battle, and he's a robot, so he can make his own choices. He's self-aware. He can live his truth if he wants. He make up up. He wanted to look. He wanted to look cute before he gets fucked. Weird ass shot of this guy dumping over and his weird foot coming forward and again voodoo. It's a pretty cool pose with her leg and you know one leg bent, the knee come close, the other leg extended. And again, her black hair just zipping off frame in that black shape. But I just can't get past this weird face. This composition feels very much like a Larry Stroman thing—a close-up of a face screaming. I just feel like I've seen that before, and and I mean that in a good way. It's a weird thing that he does, but you know you got. Sexy warbler or sexy Spartan, I guess. And Voodoo's here kicking the shit out of people. She went from like a someone who's never been trained in the arts of combat and she's spent some time with the Wildcats and now apparently she's a badass warrior ninja babe, like beating people to death with just pointing her hands straight and chopping them straight into their face. I guess. <clears throat> and. <laughs> Larry Stroman, weird, and why do you do this? This is Zealot jumping into it, but here's her back, and this is her ass, and then her thigh bent at the knee. It's such a weird, mutated, like, looks like a tongue touching the tip of a cock, if I'm being honest with you. Like, look at this. This is like a limp fucking cock, and this is this looks like her back is like a tongue. I think there's some s ridiculous sexual imagery going on there. That, or I've just got a fucked up sense of seeing shit. It's like a Rorschach test. You just see a weird shape, and what do you see? I'm like, I see a tongue touching a cock. Somebody else would be like, it's just a girl jumping in to fight monsters. Larry Stroman, you're weird, brother. Don't ever change, please. Good Lord. It's so strange. Um, whatever the fuck is going on in this story. We're just here for the artwork. What, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on here. This guy looks like the kingpin. There was one interesting part coming up here somewhere. I don't know if there's some B-plot thing going on. Bad guy killed somebody. Close-up of a screamy face again. Guy walking out a door. Weird designing elements. That's fine. You got Spartan. It looks like he maybe took his lipstick off. Definitely did. And Zealot, she's freaking out. She's puking out her mouth. Um, bent over. Weird pose. I appreciate this shot right here with her hand coming towards us and that blade in her hand and then the, like, the hand guard hilt. It's like a half curve arch with these pointy blades, but he's got it coming in perspective towards us. I, I know that disord, that disord, Jesus, that design on that sword very much. I've seen it in the books and I always thought it was pretty cool. But to see him draw it in this perspective coming towards us, hats off to him for that detail. That is really cool. Warblades fighting, grifters fighting, everyone's fighting, everyone's kung fu fighting. Everyone's losing their minds. I don't know what's going on. I wonder where this funny part is. Spartan, something happens to him. He's just arching his back. Look at this weird giant hand coming towards us. So weird. It looks odd. I don't care for it. And again, the inking, there's very strong, sharp, thick ink strokes going on here. I just don't know that it fits Strowman's artwork. I know I've already gone over that, but this is just an example of... I'm not saying it's bad. I think the inker is obviously really good and he's in control of his ink brush. But I just feel like a different inking style would fit better 
on Strowman's work. Um, so Spartan got something. I don't know. I don't know what's happening to him. But on this next page, there's this cool shot of him like flying down, zapping somebody. And he's got his lipstick back on. But he also got his brains blown out. But he's a robot, so there's little sparks coming up. But there's like a giant chunk missing out of his head. But he doesn't care. He's got his lipstick on. He looks pretty. He looked pretty when he got fucked. So Maul is smashing someone, something. I don't know. He's screaming. I don't know. I guess this is Warblade. What a weird, mutated-looking, weird face. Grifter here. <laughs> this is funny with his little mask and his arm hunkered up, just blasting off screen. Warblade cutting people up. Warblade cutting Grifter up. I guess they're getting mind controlled and something's going on here. I like this shot right there, this big face shot of Warblade. That's pretty cool. Looking good. And then Maul smashes his big ass hand down. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't think Larry Stroman gave two shits about how he drew that gun. I mean, for real. But then something interrupted them. They're done fighting, I guess. Look at Voodoo's wild ass weird hair. I mean, Jesus Lord, look at it in both these panel like. I mean, that's an awesome little panel of her big hair and her big ass. And then look at fucked up Spartan with his weird scattered ass head and hair and wires hanging out. I think there's, oh yeah, there's a panel right there. There, That's great. I mean, in the early issues of Wildcat, Spartan was getting just blown the hell away all the time. He was always being ripped apart. But that's one of the most unique versions of that ever just a hole blown out and there's just some robotic components just sticking up really funny and it just ends with the bad guys doing so i don't even know I, I don't know larry stroman is so goddamn weird and it's fine like you get, we got to have guys like that i wish the comic industry and the mainstream comics would have some more weird shit like this. I feel like everyone who's drawn everything from Marvel or DC is just such this specific house style of clean and perfectly rendered and anatomically flawless and it's all digital. You need somebody weird. What a wide variety of artists that was going on back in the day when you had a Rob Liefeld and a Todd McFarlane and a Larry Stroman and a Sam Keith and a Bill Sinkovich and a Frank Miller. Like... All these guys that had something unique and interesting to bring to the table. Does, does that exist anywhere outside of independent comics? I mean, Larry Stroman's work is not my favorite. I would never pick up a book just because he drew it, but it's, it's close. It would depend on what it is. But I feel like he has in him, I mean, he's an older guy now, and I don't know if he cares anymore to draw comics and he certainly draws characters and stuff he's drawing but i don't think he draws comics but i feel like he still I, he never got the opportunity to be on a book that's like this is his masterwork. this is what people will look back and go this is the greatest thing he ever did this was his peak version of him uh i just I don't feel like he ever quite quite got there and i but i don't know everything he's done i know he did that um that image tribe you know with the boxing world and the chick with the big fat ass and i we looked at tribe number one a long time ago and it that comic makes no goddamn goddamn sense i can't read it i can't understand i can't make heads or tails of it at all so i don't know i wish that we could get a real great work out of them but it's probably never going to happen anyway wildcats annual weird book really weird and that's fine anyway Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it very much. See you next time.